1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on Tactics. Chaplain's Report today comes from the book of Daniel, and we're going to specifically be looking in Daniel 6, continuing the series that we started on that. And just so you recall, just to give you kind of a, a quick primer on what's going on, King Darius has taken over the kingdom. The Medes and the Persians, rather than the Babylonians, are now running things. And because of that, that's caused a sort of fruit basket turnover. It's kind of like, imagine when we have a turnover of presidency, you have a new attorney general and a new uh, secretary of state and all those other things, but imagine that on steroids. And also imagine it to where they keep a lot of the, the people that used to be there. And so they're just sort of reshuffling the deck and reorganizing everybody, and Daniel finds a lot of favor with King Darius. King Darius seems to really like him. He's even considering making him the number two guy over the entire kingdom. And there are other people, other people that are in this political realm that see this and are thinking, we got to do something to get rid of this Daniel guy because he is really kicking our butts when it comes to gaining favor with the king. And if we don't do something, then he is going to get this position and we're just going to get lesser positions. And so because they all wanted the position, they sort of decide to create an alliance and figure out a plan to get rid of Daniel. Well, they get their, they get together, they, they try to put their heads together to figure something out, and they said, it doesn't matter what we do, we can't f find any dirt on this guy, we can't find any reason that the king shouldn't pick Daniel, so the only thing that they can think of is to use his religion against him. They can't go after his character. They can't suggest that he's a bad guy or that he's bad at his job. So they fall back on the only thing that they can think of, which is to attack the man's religion. And we see that plan sort of take shape here in the book of Daniel, chapter 6, verses 7 through 8. All the commissioners of the kingdom, the perfects and the satraps, the high officials and the governors have consulted together that the king should establish a statute and enforce an injunction that everyone who makes a petition to any god or man besides you, O king, for thirty days, shall be cast into the lion's den. Now, O king, establish the injunction and sign the document, so that it may not be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which may not be revoked. Now, to really understand what's going on here, you do need a little bit of historic context. The way that the government worked with the Medes and the Persians is once a decree was issued, that was it. Nobody, not even the king, could undo once he had signed it. And so they know this, and that's the reason they're urging this to take place. But I want you to notice the way that they go about it. Because the method here, it says something about them and their motives. But it wouldn't have worked if it hadn't been for the king being able to be duped. And why was it so easy for them to kick, trick the king who really likes Daniel? You see, the reason they were able to pull this off is because the king was prideful. The reason they were able to make this work so easily is because they appealed to the king's pride and his sense of greatness. The same pride that we've seen that plagued Belshazzar and Nebuchadnezzar, their pre his predecessors. What they did was they appealed to him and talked about how great he is and how wonderful he is and how he's so great that nobody should really be worshiping or making any kind of decree towards anybody other than you. Nobody should be asking any god for anything other than you. And you see a little bit of that playing in to where in the ancient world it was not that uncommon for rulers to be thought of as gods. You can see that ranging all the way back to the Epic of Gilgamesh, where they refer to just the royals, not everybody else, just the royals as being the descendants of God. Ancient Egypt, they would refer to the pharaohs as the sons of Ra. Now, the regular Egyptians, they weren't. But the royals and the members of the royal family, they were seen as kin to the gods. And that's what's going on here, is that this is probably a culture that has some kind of emperor or kingdom worship. 
And so because of that, they think of Darius, and Darius seems to kind of think of himself as at least being on somewhat even footing with the supernatural beings and the gods. And so he issues this decree that if anybody gives any kind of petition to any god other than me, again, kind of placing himself in the, in the place of a god, then they are to be punished and they are to be thrown into the lion's den. And the reason that he was so sure of himself, the reason that he was so confident and thought that this was such a good idea that he put it into a proclamation that could not be revoked, that not even he could undo according to their legal system, is because he believed they were right. They believed that he really was worthy of worship and praise, and for nobody else in the kingdom, they didn't need any god. They had Darius. You don't need to pray to a god. You already have Darius, and so if you have any requests, obviously King Darius can do anything that your gods can do. So why not make him the sole person that you can go to a petition with? You see, these people were very sneaky and crafty, and the way that they were able to pull it off is because Darius thought way too much of himself. So often in our lives, pride goes before the fall. So often in our lives, we forget to consider that we may have our own shortcomings and fallibilities, and maybe that's the reason that we ought to proceed with caution. In this particular instance, Darius doesn't have any of that. He doesn't have that conscience in his head saying, no, this isn't right. You shouldn't do this. And because of that, as we'll see a little bit later on, somebody that he cared a great deal about was punished. Somebody that he cared a great deal about was put into great danger because of his own carelessness and his pride. And isn't that something that we should caution ourselves against? That unlike King Darius, what we need to do is to be humble so that we will not allow our pride to guide us into a place where there will be danger. Because eventually what happens here is that Darius is, of course, injured by the thought of Daniel being killed. But it also would have hurt other people. That his own lack of awareness and lack of humility could have cost people their lives. And he didn't have the foresight or the humility to actually see that. See, when we're talking about pride... The reason it's so deadly is because it not only blinds us to our own ambition, it not only blinds us to our own fallibility, it blinds us to what that fallibility or those shortcomings in our own lives can do to other people. It blinds us to the possibility of harming others when we should be helping them. And it places us at the center of the universe. It puts so much emphasis on us, like Darius did in this decree, that we forgot to focus on who is really worthy of these petitions, who is really worthy of worship. It's the person that others should really be putting their faith in and the ones that we should be putting our faith in. We should never be like King Darius and say, look, if you have problems, just come to me, I'll solve them. Because let's say that someone has a problem that legitimately can be solved by us. Wouldn't anything that we have to offer them be something that God originally gave us anyway? Wouldn't any gift or any wisdom anything that we have that we could offer to help them with, it would be something that originally God gave us in the first place. We're just stewards of his blessings. We're just the people that happen to be able to tell other people, you know, whether it comes to the gospel or whether it comes to just general life advice, the reason that we're able to help others is because God has blessed us to begin with. Let us never forget that truth, as Darius did. Stay the course, friends. Hey, y'all know I'm a stats and numbers guy, so here's some fun facts for you. People that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel are 200% more satisfied with their online video content and 400% more likely to be able to speak intelligently about politics and religion with somebody they know. Also, four out of five people that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel live healthier, more fulfilling lives. And that fifth guy was just a social justice warrior with a stick up his butt. Also, 82% of the statistics on the internet, totally made up.